person will use in trying to create extensions. Uh, my name is Mark Goodings. You can interact on social media with any of these items, but since I've got a lot of slides, I'm not going to read them out. So, interact here. So, first I'm going to tell a bit of what's out there because there's more solutions than Joomla Component Builder. Why use a tool? And then I'll focus in on the Joomla Component Builder itself and we'll have a nice giveaway at the end of the session. So, why use a tool at all? What's out there? We have Component Creator. I think that's a relatively well-known extension by our esteemed Joomla CERN. It's, it's a SaaS solution. It's closed source. It's free for one table. You have to pay subscription, but you do get professional support. There's this wonderful tool that's been presented on uh, JAB since 2015 or even earlier, JoomDD, uh, which is actually a model-driven tool. So it actually abstracts your ideas and then generates the code out of it, uh, meaning you could, in theory, create a Joomla, a Drupal, or a WordPress website uh, going forward. It has nice plugins for uh, PHP Storm and Eclipse do that stuff. It now I also has a web editor. Uh, it has some basic reverse engineering stuff. So theoretically, you theoretically you can feed it any uh, extension, and it should be able to make a model out of that. But I emphasize the theoretical part because I think there's quite some limitations for that to actually work. But it is open source, so the esteemed developers are in the back of the room, and. Yeah, I ca you can't travel back in time, but you could have seen their session. Uh, and there's this, Joomla Component Builder, a very unknown tool, uh, but it has its own characteristics. Joomla Component Builder is a component that you load into your website. It actually is on your platform. It builds the component for your you in your platform, so you don't, you're not de uh, dependent on any SaaS solution whatsoever. Uh, and the tool is actually used to build itself. So the model that is uh, used, it's, uh, uh, they refer to themselves as um, the mapped Joomla component. That's where the, uh, you have the GUI interaction and stuff that's uh, used to generate its own code. Uh, the com at the moment, the compiled source is open source, so the map component isn't, but that's going to change. However, even at this point in time, there is no license costs and there are no limitations. So whilst Component Creator allows you to create a component based on one table, yeah, you can't do very much with that. This tool doesn't have any limitations. So. Let me start by asking you, what are the challenges that you see when you, let me first start with the question, who creates their own components or has created a, their own components in the past? Okay, that's quite a lot of people. So what are the challenges that you see in that? So let me start with <coughs> my esteemed colleagues, uh, Eve and Victor, who I especially want to thank for attending, because I <laughs> promised to do that. <laughs> so Eve. What, uh, what challenges do you see when you create a new component? No. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Okay. Yeah, that will be it. No challenges. No, it's, uh, basically, it's always the same things you write over and over. So you repeat yourself on Yeah, copy paste work. Copy paste work. Of work. Entry point, controller, MVP. Yeah. And you're not lazy. You would want to get rid of that repetition. Uh. Let's say yes. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else? Any <laughs> remarks that he would... <coughs> thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, Anybody else wants to add something? Sometimes if you change change uh, names or something, it's a pain in the ass because you have to see, oh, where it is, it's there and there and there, and you have to correct that all. Yeah. Otherwise, you get a new copy. <coughs> and is that changes because of oh things God. that you do yourself or changes that's done by Joomla? No changes that you did yourself when you see, for example, uh, uh, 
that it's not a good description of what the whatever it is mm -hmm. does. I should change it to this, and then we have to change it everywhere. Anybody want to add something? Renee? Uh, it's a bit convoluted the way that uh, components uh, actually hold together. Yes. Uh, so you can get a bit lost in that. Yeah. Well, the, the challenge I see, you can really quickly create a basic component, but if you want to do something special, and you can't do it with these component creators, you, you, you have to dive in the code yourself, obviously, and you can't load that back into the component tree. Okay. Okay, I've summarized some of the things that I uh, think that annoy me in doing that stuff. Uh, that's the boilerplating. I think that's basically what Eve was referring to, setting up the directory structure, uh, creating all the CRUD files. Now there's tools that will help you with that, PHP Storm, but still it's tedious work and uh, you have to watch the capitalization of uh, the names and there's lots of naming conventions and really I'm lazy. So anything that a tool can do for me, I'm very happy with. I also like uh, to reuse stuff. Obviously, if you've already created a lot of extensions, then you can reuse uh, previous work by copy pasting. But yeah, you want to rename it so there's some uh, work involved. Uh, you might want to reuse other people's work. So maybe somebody created something nice and yeah, reuse that. And obviously use libraries in general that contain abstract stuff. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in Joomla uh, that we all love, I think. But you still have to do some stuff by yourself and your own component uh, if you want to uh, make that work. Uh, being multilingual support, adding for, of groups, uh, the access control structure, adding history uh, to your uh, component views, uh, just as with articles, so that you can see who changed what and what time. Uh, custom fields. And not all tools support that. And obviously the tools out there have their limitations, either be it cost, be it uh, the licensing scheme, or be it uh, the skills required. And as advanced uh, items, I would say, okay, can you extend that tool easily to uh, accommodate new features? So should there be a uh, workflow extension to Joomla? How easy can you add that to your own component? Uh, a tool should, in theory, be able to add that without bothering you with all the nitty gritty details. Can you do reverse engineering? Uh, JoomDD is a tool that can do that in part, so that's okay. Uh, but to me, more importantly, is the round trip development, uh, which uh, Rene mentioned. Typically in a tool, when you start, you have this GUI where you can easily click to gather a table and views and stuff like that, and then you export it, you got your component, then you start working on it. And as soon as you realize that you missed a field or whatever something, you're screwed because you can't go back to that nice graphical model, then you have to delve into it. So round trip development is something uh, that I value. And collaborative development, working together on a single component with multiple people and that same model. So those were things that I would like to see in a tool that supports my workflow. Hence, income. Joomla Component Builder, and specifically version 2.9.7, that's the latest and current version. So anything I'm telling will pertain to this version and not to earlier versions. So if you want to check it out, check this version out, that's the latest. Uh, basically, gather and learn more. So there is this link, Joomla Component Builder, on www.vdm.io. Well, since this presentation will be available, you will not need to copy it all. And it's on the extensions directory. Unfortunately, in this talk, we can but scratch the surface. So what I hope to convey in this talk is that I touch on the ideas. And you say, oh yeah, if I could do that, that would be fine. Still, you would need to delve into this uh, yourself to get into the details. 
unfortunately there's quite some uh, documentation in the form of videos, uh, dozens and uh, yeah, dozens and dozens of hours of video, uh, which doesn't make for the easiest in looking up stuff, but it does make easy viewing. Just sitting in your home couch and streaming YouTube videos to your TV and suck it in. So yeah, we can about scratch, scratch the surface. So you would really need to have a deeper look afterwards uh, to see. Uh, how to do stuff, but if it resonates with you in what you can do, because I hope to convey that at least, uh, then you're in for a real treat. Uh, oh, well, let me go back. Because the context why I started this is because my son wanted to have a website, and children are like any customers, it's really easy. Nothing complex. I just want and in this case, he wants to, wanted to create a website with Disney characters and autographs and stuff like that. That's all he wanted. Well, it's easy. We'll do that with fields, custom fields. But two days in, and um, but I want to list in parades, and I want to do this, and I want to do that. So, yeah, not going to happen. So I introduced him to this tool, and he made it happen. And he was able, uh, well, he's not dumb, uh, he's actually quite intelligent, so, uh, but he's not a diehard programmer. But he could make it happen uh, with some help. Now, I must say that when we started, uh, yeah, there were, weren't, the number of resources were limited to help us, so there were videos, uh, but some things were unclear over the last few months. I've been in extensive contact with the developer, Lee Wellen, um, and over the months he has opened up to the idea of a number of challenges that we see, and you will see in the giveaways at the end what that resulted in, and that will actually really help you in getting started. So if we look at Joomla Component Builder, I think the first thing that you will see is the dashboard. Uh, uh, with the control panel, uh, a wiki, uh, notice board, uh, and some marketing and links. But most importantly for you, there's this wiki with here you find in find all the tutorials, all the uh, links to the YouTube videos. So once you install the component builder, you'll get access to, by, to that just by looking at the wiki. So unfortunately, it's yeah. There is an explicit link, obviously, because it's uh, um, yeah, it's part uh, of open source. Unfortunately, it's not structured in terms of technical documentation. Uh, whilst the videos are indexed in terms of there's timestamps and say here is talking about this, here is talking about that. Uh, still, it's uh, the searchability is limited. There's a forum where you can do uh, uh, question and answers and there's a li uh, obviously you can directly access that list of videos the YouTube channel uh, to look at stuff so if you look at the wiki there's some general planning uh, and you'll this is an example of the uh, video on field types it says okay at one minute and five uh, we're talking about create field types uh, at 1 minute 57, it's list view. It helps, but it's not perfect. So let's now talk about the workflow. What does it take and what's possible in creating a component? I've put together this diagram, which is simplified. And these are the topics we are going to touch upon. So we have the, uh, the components. That's the stuff that you want to build yourself. We have field types, fields. Uh, we have bespoke code, that's really custom code to yourself. We have a dynamic get, the view, list view, item view, custom view, stuff that has to do with interacting with the data uh, of your model, the controller, some library, some graphical stuff. But we'll touch on each of these items. So let's touch on the components first. I've replicated the diagram. 
So this is what you see when you look and edit a component. These are the tabs you have. I will cycle through them. So, well, here you have your details tab where you can set up the name, the versioning, do stuff with debugging line numbers, uh, yeah, anything really generally related to a component. Uh, we have a settings menu uh, where you can configure that thing uh, more in depth. Uh, here you see the list, the reference to the administrative views, the site views, custom admin views. They'll be ref uh, I'll deal with them later. Libraries and helpers. The dashboard uh, where you can create a custom dashboard for your extension with icons and stuff like that. MySQL data, the README file, which is the README that gets exported with your uh, extension. And there's dynamic integration. Uh, I'll slightly touch on that at the, the last part of the uh, presentation. So how do we build a component? Uh, the component, well, might not come as a surprise. We have field types and we have fields. So field types are basically the things that we know and love from Joomla. That is a calendar, a category, checkbox, checkboxes, color, anything like that. So that's the abstract definition of something that you would want to create. You could add your own field type to that. Uh, these types and as other fields are shared between all your components. Uh, so you don't, uh, that that's where you get part of the reuse of. You create them once and then if you've got a very specific field for a specific action, uh, some kind of zip code, uh, address validator thingy, you create it here. And then you can set up fields. Uh, and those are the instantiations of the field types. Uh, and you can create your own fields. You can create special fields with dedicated validation, stuff like that. And the fields are the stuff that eventually will end up in the database, in the tables. But until now, nothing is stored. It's just abstract. You can set up your bespoke fields, so stuff that you uh, like yourself. So there's the, the type, uh, value that it has. You can assign icons. And as you can infer here, you can add a lot of attributes to any field, just about anything that you would like. Uh, you can add extra properties here. Uh, you can, here you see and that's where we're coming to, where this, in this instance, this field in which views it's used. So it is in the admin view series, in the admin view preacher, in the admin view sermons. That's of the installed applications that I have. And yeah, here's information on the attributes used to filter. So there's a lot of stuff that you can configure <coughs> per field type. Uh, to set it up. You, in the bottom right corner we saw the views it was used in and that's where it gets tangible. So once you set up your field types and your fields, if you at least need new ones that are not default with the tool, you're going to set up your views. And I think we're familiar with the list views and the item views. So the list views is where you've got your tabular, tabular display of multiple items and your item view is the typical view of one of those uh, items. So that's the item view. Uh, component uh, builder introduces also a custom view, uh, which is used to like for reporting where you can do graphing or anything special that's not necessarily in the realm of a item view itself or a list view. So these fields are the stuff that's going to get added to the database. You can add all kinds of conditions in the view 
for that. You can add buttons to a view, uh, not necessarily a standard save and commit, but any other actions. And there's a plethora of options to hook into your code. So uh, adding an Ajax uh, uh, call, uh, add PHP that's run on the get item. So when you get a singular item, uh, add uh, PHP for batch, uh, add, P add PHP for uh, after publishing, uh, before deleting, uh, post save. Well, uh, for the list query, so you could uh, read data from the database and manipulate it to show it in a different form. So if you have uh, like a numeric presentation of whatever attributes, you could change that then to display as an icon or what you would wish. Lots of options here and that covers a lot of items already. So basically that hooks into, whilst it is in the view, it hooks in not only into the view, but also into the model and controller parts. Uh, as a last part, you saw something about the MySQL. So you can add a MySQL dump to initialize that table on uh, installation. And there's the usual stuff regarding publishing and permissions that we all know from any standard Joomla thing. But that also means that at this level, you uh, the entire workflow in Component Builder, you can add the same restrictions to as we add uh, for other components. So you can have some people in some groups have the right to create fields or not create fields, create tables, yeah, anything that you would want. Uh, so here we have, uh, the linked fields, the fields that are linked uh, to that uh, table. So that's a view of it. So in an overview, you could say, okay, is this sortable? Can I search it? So you can toggle it on and off. Where does it show in a tab? Uh, so not everything shows in one. Uh, how does it order? Uh, uh, what's with the permissions? There's nothing here, but uh, links, alias. So there's a whole overview and you can edit each uh, item from here. So you can edit the attributes of how it behaves in a list view or in an item view uh, to your heart's desire. Uh, he has an opinion that there shouldn't be more than 60 fields in an admin view. Yeah, not unrealistic. You can also add conditions to a field uh, when it's to, su supposed to be shown under which circumstances so that you can have a uh, more clean display. Uh, and this all draws back in, the, uh, in when building on the standard Joomla mechanisms that we have in the XML files to show hide or show on. Well, it's, I don't know the exact uh, syntax anywhere, but you can say show on something of another field in the XML file. So that in basic, covers our view and the stuff uh, that uh, we have in the, uh, yeah, in the basic table. Now, obviously you want to uh, visualize that. Um, so the, uh, it allows templating as it's called. Um, I hope everybody recognizes this structure where you have the default PHP view, that's your site view and then you can split it up in separate parts uh, to make it more readable. And those are called the templates. So you can have multiple templates uh, that you can use in different uh, base views, uh, site views uh, to set up your, uh, to set up your view. And there's an option to add uh, layouts. These are basically the the Joomla layout, you set them up through the GUI and then you can reference them in the usual way. But the point being that the GUI gives you access to all of these items that uh, typically are normally codable. Furthermore, uh, we have the uh, options to add libraries 
those are at the global level, standard it supports stuff uh, for uh, Bootstrap 4, UI kit, uh, and a number of libraries. But if you have a, another framework that you like for JavaScript, you can define that for that view so it loads it in and it's referenced and you don't need to worry about it. So it's just an example of how it looks like. Uh, you've got your URL, URL the type. Yes, Christian. Keeping tracks of the libraries, uh, is it always getting the latest? No, probably not. It depends on what URL you can provide here. So I think in this case, it's getting UIKit 300 beta, blah, 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 for that version of your created component. So once you bring out a new component, a uh, new version, you could check if there's a new version of UIKit, put it in here, and generate your component again. Uh, does it reference or does it really it just, just it? Loads no, what's entered here just ends up as a piece of code uh, in, in loading the data. But it's a GUI interface to ensure that it gets on all the pages that is referenced via the GUI. So depending on, uh, uh, so this is on the Cloudflare CDN. Yeah. So it gets it from there. So there will just be a reference in the code to load it from there. But okay. there's nothing holding you back to actually uh, set it up locally. Uh, you just change the URL here and then you're done. Okay. You can tweak it whatever you, way you want, would want to. Now we had a very basic table view. That's one table. But yeah, that's at least not how typically my components work because uh, we have one to n uh, relations in decomposing or normalizing your data. So you would want to be able to combine that in a view. Uh, and that's where the dynamic get comes in. Um, dynamic get has two basic tabs. The ones that says uh, filter, <coughs> uh, it says tweak. I uh, hope it's a bit visible. And here you can see where it says access level uh, ID in a dot access, so that's the, uh, so it actually knows about the access level uh, of the user, and since we have a uh, access level in the uh, in that table, or for that uh, element, it will ensure that it will only show. So in the GUI, you can uh, restrict access to stuff. Uh, you can uh, have where filtering where you can say, okay, I only want the published ones. Uh, uh, you can sort it uh, and you can even set globals that you can use in your code. Well, globals is not the best practice, but hey, it's a way to at least get at it. Here you can do a lot of things in uh, extending your data, filtering it. You can add, uh, uh, this is where you would add search for it by here uh, addressing the search uh, uh, elements from the post and then making sure that you filter on that. So very powerful. This all gets translated into basic database uh, language. So uh, typically it's MySQL queries. Another aspect obviously is how to create relationships because having one table uh, probably refers to other tables and that's where this is called a joint. Uh, I don't think it's, yeah. But uh, you see, okay, series, single, S, B, join, A series, equal. So here yeah, you <coughs> define your joining queries between your tables so that for that view you get one combined table uh, that holds all the information to be displayed, which again is very powerful. Do you dynamically add joins to the uh, Now define dynamically. You can add oh, them. Can you, can you make multiple joins? Yes, you can add as many as you want here. Oh, okay. So there's no 
actual limitation to it. This will just really translate one to one in MySQL uh, stuff. Uh, and yeah, since this is a repeatable uh, field, you can add in, add in as many as you want and make it as complex as you want. Um, I can't see, but you can make any kind of join, yeah? Uh, yes. Left join, right join, inner join, outer join. So in this in that combination with being able to join tables, uh, add the filtering, there's an awful lot you can already do at database level. What you can't do at database level, you can do at uh, the PHP level, where I saw it, uh, uh, with get list items, you could do additional stuff there. So uh, yeah, options are virtually limitless. Custom code, not to be confused with bespoke code. Uh, there is some options to have <coughs> custom, what is called custom code uh, in the code snippets that you are defining. And the custom code could be, it's basically macros. So it's a search and replace thing. You define snippets and by uh, uh, adding this in an ex, uh, actual piece of uh, <coughs> code, it will fetch in that uh, larger piece of code so that you don't need to uh, recode your get view ID every time. Uh, you can also pass values to that uh, snippet of code. Uh, basically, it's calling that a function. So that's just to centralize your code. Uh, have functions at the GUI level. Then, okay, this should have been the bespoke code, not the custom code, because that's, to me, that's the unicorn uh, thing of this component builder, and this is what got me interested in it. Uh, there's a lot of options in there, but for whatever reason, I always end up wanting to change something that can't be changed directly in the GUI. And that's where this Joomla, Compu Joomla Component Builder excels, I think, because it will allow you to add code or change code anywhere in your compiled component. The only limitation is that you have to add some structure on that uh, or commenting on that so that it can be found so that's insert this blah blah this and with that and anything in between there will be inserted and the beauty of it is if you do that uh, the builder tool will extract these pieces of code and the next time around you build it it will reinsert them so you will be able to change stuff at any location, be it in PHP or HTML, and have it be imported. So that would, for example, mean if you now have a three-point X component, which has a certain file layout structure, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, if in a few months' time there is a version that can build for Joomla 4.0, your changes would be put in the relevant files in other locations and you wouldn't need worry about it. It would just build with your custom changes, but that for Joomla 4. And for those familiar, Joomla 4 has a slightly, whilst it works with the Joomla 3, the directory structure and uh, file structure, that's not the best practice. The best practice is where files are shuffled around a little bit uh, anybody who wants to know, just ask George. He'll be happy to <laughs> tell you about it. And uh, see, there's a, um, I've listed the number, uh, a number of stuff, so you can say insert this or replace a piece of existing code. Um, and so when it, uh, so you see what happens when it uh, gets added back in again. It adds some tags so that it can do its homework and actually knows which piece of software is changed at what location. 
So this was really what got me enthusiastic about this tool because this is not something I've seen before and it will allow for round trip development. Create it in GUI, modify it to your extent, being you can already modify a lot in the component builder itself. If not, you can change it anywhere else and it will be sucked in again. And then if you want to add a new database table, a new view, extra columns, Joomla Component Builder will take care of that. It will create uh, associated update scripts for the MySQL databases. It will do everything. Obviously, yeah, some stuff needs to be compiled. And this is a bit what you can see when it gets compiled. So you select your component. In this case, I've got component builder, sermon distributor, question and answers, demo and demo advanced. Select one of them and hit the compile button. And that's it. Once it's done, it makes some assumption, assumptions about the time you saved. Uh, well, <laughs> it's assumptions, but yeah, to some extent you at least get the sense that you actually save time because you didn't have to create the directory structure, uh, nothing like that. And once you compile, you can click on this one to install it immediately, or you download it, or you reference wherever that uh, component is. So, so this install immediately is installing in the site where you have the yes. component building running? Yeah. Okay. And if you have it somewhere else running, you can use this URL or path depending on where it is. Okay. Now you could, uh, if you have one development site, it's easy to uh, run component builder there. And uh, because every package can be exported and imported in another site uh, without problems. There's a uh, option to, if you have a commercial component, to have it encrypted and secured by a key so that it only can be installed if you have that key. You're watching like you're seeing water burn. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need it. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, I started with some MISC stuff. Uh, you'll find some examples, for example, in there that in the tutorials, which I thought was really a nice one that adds, uh, deals with uh, drag and drop uploading with all kinds of filtering on uh, content type security, uh, looking if it's a PDF, uh, file size, uh, resizing images. There's a very complex example there uh, on how to use that with ACL so that only certain groups people can do that. Yeah, so very interested. Another thing that probably Renee also would like uh, to see is that there is a... Just stop mentioning my name. Sorry, but yeah, 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 well, I would say I know you, but I know most of the people in the room, so... <laughs> that, sorry, but you're such familiar, so familiar. Collaborative workflow. Uh, if you work on a thing, uh, so you can work on the same installation but then you deal with the normal Joomla uh, problems of locking up your article and then the article is locked and somebody else cannot work with it. But there's actually, uh, so you can't do stuff sim simultaneously. There's actually a workflow set up where you can do, we have multiple developers work on their local installation where the changes get merged using Git. Uh, so you can have a collaborative workflow on that. So the mapped component gets uh, versioned in your own Git stuff. There's also community components that use the same workflow or a similar workflow. And it's a similar way of working. We have the uh, upstream repository. Uh, so you fork that in your local GitHub. Uh, you clone it to your local development environment. You make changes to, for example, the question and answers uh, component. You set up your upstream and then you uh, 
push it and make a pull request and then uh, the pull request may or may not get accepted and then you can download the new question and answer component again but that workflow can, you can also set up locally uh, yeah I pulled that away now for the giveaways so until today or actually until the start of this presentation VDM that's the company of Dewellen uh, sold the mapped component packages. So the question and answer modules would cost you $94. The sermon distributor would cost you $46. And the big thing, the component builder, so the thing that we are actually talking about, which builds itself, could set you off $800, well, totaling over $1,000, which is a lot of money. However, in the last month, talking uh, to Llewellyn and he, he talking to his team, there was a big change in his attitude and giving back. And so anybody that's here, if you use this link, take time to take pictures, I'll step aside. So you can see at which time I made this presentation, this slide. <laughs> well, you can hit on me later if you need it. On that page, you can get these three packages. Come on, Elvis. You ready? Thank you. So you, uh, if you open that page now, you will see uh, that you can access these and you can get the keys. The only thing to be eligible for the keys is that you are asked that you star, share or preferably fork uh, the respective components. If you have a public email address you should get sent the key automatically so a public email address in Git that's publicly accessible. If not you can claim your key on this page. So you can get the sermon distributor, the question and answers, and the Joomla component builder itself. Watch, or fo watch, fork, or star it. And you get notified if you have a public email address in Git. Then it's very easy in terms of you get to the components, you can import the packages here. So it has an import JCB packages that you can, it, they will list no need to search for them Here you can also see that you can export packages and then you'll get something like this uh what says this blah 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 and here you add the key that you get distributed and this is what shows when you progress so i got the component builder paid and locked and it's installed and here it shows the all of the extensions. I got a little privilege in getting these up front. So, and so I have keys, but don't ask me for keys. I will not give them. There's a perfectly simple way to get them. Just start fork or share and you'll get your own key. And with that, I want to say a huge thanks and shout out to Llewellyn Valamara, who's somewhere in Africa. And he's sure to look this back. Any questions on this? It's a lot to take in, I don't know. How, how big is his company? Is he a one-man show? Or? I actually don't know. I know he has employees, but I actually don't know how big his company is. The picture of the office building is a huge office building, but I don't think he owns it all. The still thing that comes to mind is this is a huge thing, I guess. No, absolutely not. He's been so working very hard the last days to. It's, it's a it's a real big package. Why haven't we haven't we all heard of it before? I don't know. Mm. I, I, I I I have. Well, you've heard it. Uh, came across it before, and that's actually how I triggered my son to use it. And I actually heard of it years back, mm. but to me, it's a bit like 
Joomla itself. Uh, I heard about it, uh, but only when I saw that it started to be multilingual and have access control in the core, I got interested. And the thing that got me interested in here is the fact that I can do modification in any location of my component. I have no limitations on that, and I can still do round trip development. And by giving back, obviously, uh, you well and uh, hopes and wants everybody to contribute uh, so that we he can extend this even further. And I've already uh, started to talk with my uh, friends from uh, JoomDD uh, to see if there's maybe there's common ground because I also very much like their idea about having model driven development. Don't know how to bridge it yet, but since it's now going to be open source two ways, the option exists. And that's really exciting to me. Yeah, I would think that the cost uh, is not putting or has been until now. Sorry, yeah, you could use it, but you couldn't change it. Uh, and uh, if there's no, uh, there's no sort of um, a free cut down version, or no, well, it, it was totally free, and you could use it for free, mm. but you could you couldn't have the mapped component, so the one that builds itself, and change that, and you wouldn't have the example components, example components. So that you could, look, how does he do this? How does he filter? How does he do this? And so starting, a cut down version, uh, a yeah. But starting today, you have two example components that will really help you uh, on the levels that I struggled in finding things out. And you'll have the Joomla component builder, where I hope that the community will take it up uh, and. I should give it a go. I've been using Kim for me as a, um, a component creator instead, and now I'll try this one. Definitely 100%. Okay. <laughs> so I've been silently signaled <laughs> that it's the end. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jens. Uh, if there's any more questions, just to ask me when I'm moving around. <laughs>